Okay, I just wanted to show off a little project I've been working on for the last couple months, kind of on and off. Uh, you can see it's a, one of the newer models, slim mini PS1, PlayStation 1s. Um, but I've basically stripped everything out of here and put um, a little emulator console inside of it. So, I'm just opening it up here. This is what's going on inside. I don't know if you can see that. This is a, it's a little board, kind of similar to the Raspberry Pi. A little bit more powerful though. It's called the Riot Board. And it's like Internet of Things with an R in front of it. So Riot Board. Um, and it's got better specs than Raspberry Pi. So that's why I chose to go with this one as opposed to that. Um, obviously the goal of a project like this is to be able to emulate PS1 games flawlessly and from what I saw the Raspberry Pi wasn't really able to do that very well. Um, just some features here. It has uh, two USB ports. It actually has four but I desoldered. I, I detached the other little connector here. Um, so it's got four USB ports, uh, Ethernet, micro SD as well as a uh, full SD. little GPIO header there. It runs off just any typical 5 volt power supply. Um, it's got HDMI out and then also uh, micro HDMI, I think, or mini HDMI. And then I think this is a like a USB on the go kind of thing. Um, so pretty much just kind of your, your standard connectors. Nothing really too special going on. Um, as far as changes I've made to it, um, I actually really haven't done mu much of anything. Um, I desolder the original power jack off of the PlayStation 1 and just kind of hot glued it there in place and then routed the wires over here to the input just underneath the board there so there's no actual jack plugged in there but the, the power still goes there just fine and then I interrupted the power line with the original PS1 power switch here so you can still use that to turn it on and off uh, so that's cool um, and then as you can see I basically just cut the entire front half of the or the front section of the PS1 PCB off so I have these uh, original controller ports and memory card slots and then I bought a little USB uh, PS1 controller adapter off of eBay and then I just desoldered the controller ports that came on that and then just jumped the wires from the original controller ports onto this little USB one and then I hardwired the, the uh, PS1 a USB adapter into here so that's why I detached that just because if I had left the USB slot, it wouldn't actually fit here. There's not enough room to plug a full thing into there. Um, and then it just has HDMI out on the back. I'd like to be able to figure out some way to make this HDMI jack flush here on the back. But HDMI has like 30 wires or 20, 20 wires or something like that. Uh, and it's just kind of a headache to try to m manually hand solder that. So... I just kind of stuck this in there. You can't actually unplug this. This jack is too wide here, but it does fit out the back. So I just kind of leave this HDMI jack plugged in at all times. It's not the best solution, but I guess it gets the job done for me. Um, and I'm relatively happy with it. And then if you can see here, I've just, I've just uh, attached a little green LED here. Then I just wired it in. I think this is just like a 3.3 line, 3.3 volt line, and then into ground. And I think I actually put a little resistor there. You can't really see it because it's under the heat shrink tubing, but a little resistor there just so it doesn't draw too much current. Um, and basically what that, what that does is as soon as this board turns on, it'll supply power to that line. So there's no like scripting or anything going on. You know, it's not like smart or anything. Basically if it has power, the LED will turn on, which... Uh, works obviously so that's kind of cool that the original power jack and if I go ahead and put this little top part back on let's see if I can do that this little back power jack kind of has grooves you have to slide that back piece into so that's I don't know it's not sometimes it can be a little tricky to get it in there well It does shut. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Oh, 
There we go. Okay. So it's nice and flush. You know, everything fits inside there. The the flip top um, still works, so I can open it up. Obviously, there's just nothing going on in there, so you can look and see the wires. I kind of toyed with the idea of making it, uh, wiring another little USB cable under there with a female end on it, so I could just have a little female sticking out there. But, uh, I don't know, I haven't done that yet. So, if I go ahead, um, you can't actually, it's the same power jack, but you can't actually use the same power supply. The usual power supply used 7.5 volts. I didn't actually like play around to see if the right board would tolerate that much voltage um, because the PSP charger actually uses the same jack size and the PSP charges off 5 volts. So I just used a little PSP charger that I had lying around um, and that just fits perfectly into there. So that's not really an issue. So I didn't play around with that too much. So if I go ahead and um, let me turn my monitor on and then I'll fire this puppy up. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this on now. So just the original power jack here. And you can see the little LED comes on. I'll go ahead and set that down there for now. Give it a minute to fire up here. So as you can see, it's just running Android. It actually runs 4.1, I think that's KitKat. Um, just like the Android open source project build, I guess. I don't think that they really added anything extra or anything like that. And there's actually some limitations of that build of Android that I'll kind of talk about. Um, so the first thing, it was kind of a bummer, was that initially when I was kind of building this idea, I got that a little PS1 to USB adapter, and I plugged it into my Nexus 5 phone with a on-the-go adapter, and it worked fine. I mean, no problem. Apparently the Android kernel has a driver for that built in. Um, and actually, just kind of a side note, you'll find that most controllers and most USB peripherals that you plug in through an on-the-go adapter, if you have a Nexus, will work. Um, I've used the Xbox 360 wireless receiver, um, just a standard PS3 controller over USB, and then like any thumb drive or whatever, obviously that works. Um, so I figured, hey, you know, I mean, if this runs Android, it's the same kind of version and everything, it'll probably work on the right board as well. But to my dismay, it didn't work just out of the box like that. So what I ended up having to do was, I have to, luckily, um, the little Logitech, I have a Logitech keyboard here, that USB dongle does work out of the box, so I can have a, a mouse and a keyboard just working there. And then I found this app on the App Store. It's a, like it's called like Joy Center, I think. Um, the app kind of sucks, but I don't know. It is what it is. So, so what I have to do is I have to use the mouse every time I start this up to launch the app. You know, click OK. It asks this every time, even if I check that. It asks every single time. And it'll scan it, found it. So if I go ahead now here, and if I plug my controller in, um, I haven't been able to get actual controller port one working, so I have to plug it into controller port two. I don't know if that's an issue with the app or kind of with my soldering hack job I did. I'll kind of have to play around with that a little bit more. But if I plug that in, you can see here this app, if you can see, will kind of just show which buttons I'm pressing. So you can see as I'm, you know, pressing different things, you can see on the screen that it's changing. It just kind of tells me which app is, or sorry, which button is being pressed. This app is really janky, so I have to exit it by hitting the back button down here. So I exit out of that, and then from there I'm basically good to go. You can see it says Joystick Center activated. Um, so I'll go ahead and launch, well, I don't want to launch a shark yet. Just a Game Boy Advance emulator here. I'm playing around with uh, F-Zero. So we'll get this going. So you can hear that um, it just does audio over HDMI, so that's really nice. Let's go ahead and start up a game here. Oh, Bishop. So I'll try to like hold the controller up so you can see what I'm pressing here. And hopefully you can still see. 
Let's see how well I can play this. So you can see, I mean, it just it runs 100%, sound and everything looks great. A heck of a lot better than playing on, on the original GBA with the crappy, no backlit screen or anything. You know, you can barely see anything. The colors just look way better. Um, and then I'll also, let me pause this. I can also turn on the analog, and I, and I actually never owned an original PS1, so I don't know how this works on the original system. But when analog is off, it just uses the D-pad. And so if I go ahead and turn analog on, you can see that little light comes on. Let's see if my camera can focus here. Well, maybe not. But a little light comes on, and that'll let me use this joystick. And, and it turns off the D-pad. I, I guess that's how it worked originally, but I don't really know, so... So now I can use the joystick also if I want. Personally, I kind of like the D-pad a little bit better, but... Anyways, so let me exit out of this and show you kind of the real star of the show. Obviously a Raspberry Pi would be able to do Game Boy just fine, and actually probably a little bit better because the front end's better, but... Um, let's... this is RetroArch. Um, it's kind of just an emulator suite. I think... I guess there's another project called Libretto, which kind of compiles a bunch of open source emulators. And then RetroArch is kind of a front end for Libretto. Um, and they have builds for basically every platform, including Android, so this is what I'm running here. There's other PlayStation 1 emulators for uh, Android, but this is just the one I grabbed. It seemed like it worked pretty well, so... And it does basically any console, so that's good. So let me just load content here. And I'm sure everybody just wants to see the best game ever made. Load it up here. I haven't figured out a way to skip the intro here, <laughs> so just gotta watch that. I don't know if this is like something they would normally slow down on, something like the Raspberry Pi or other emulators, but I guess this is just like a, what do they call this, like full motion video or FMV or something. Um, obviously it's playing that just fine. I would kind of guess that this isn't usually an issue because it's just playing a video file, it's not actually rendering anything really on the fly. So it's probably less intensive than, you know, if it was actually playing the game, but here we go, everybody's favorite game. Full disclosure, I've never actually... I've actually never really even played this game. I've never attempted to beat it, or... Like I said, I never had a PlayStation growing up, so it just wasn't really something that I had the opportunity to play. My brother actually had this game, though. They, they released it on PC, which was kind of weird, but he actually had it on PC. Um, and I remember him playing it a lot, but... It just seemed... I don't know, it just seemed too complicated to me. RPGs are hard for me to get into anyways, just because I guess I'm just more of a casual gamer, like F-Zero or something, you know, you can just pick it up and play it for five minutes, but 
I don't always just want to get way into a storyline or something, but... Here we go. Man, didn't the graphics look so much better back in like 1997 when this game came out? <laughs> Alright, let's follow him. Actually, let me... Uh, the settings here. Crank up all the speed. So you probably heard that there was a, there were like a couple kind of like really quick hiccups in the audio when it was loading this battle. Um, I mean, I mean, it's not like slowing down too bad or anything, and it's pretty minor, although still a little bit annoying. So it's not like 100%. I, could, I guess I could play with some other emulators, see if they run a little bit better, um, but I just haven't yet. And really, for all intents and purposes, this works fine. So that transition, I guess, I, I don't know if this is like actually rendering it or if that was like a video, but that transition worked fine, so I'd assume that would be kind of one of the more intensive things this game is doing, and that obviously worked fine, so that's cool. And if you notice that time the battle didn't um, pick up or anything, the audio didn't, so I don't know, yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't. Some battles are harder than others, but I mean, honestly, for the most part, I'd say it's about, you know, 95% accurate emulation, full speed and everything. Totally acceptable if you were, you know, actually wanting to play this game. Sweet. Anyways, I think you about get the point of that. So I can just go ahead and exit it there. Okay, so just in closing, um, some additional thoughts. The Rivalware also supports Linux distributions, so I think it's, they have like builds of Ubuntu by default, as well as Android. I haven't played around with Ubuntu on this. Um, I would imagine that it probably has a better kernel that might support the uh, PS1 USB adapter out of the box. Um, I've just been a little bit hesitant to play around with Linux just because it doesn't usually seem to go that well. It either works or it doesn't. And flashing new images on this right board isn't as easy as it is on like a Raspberry Pi. So I just haven't messed around with that. I'll, I'll probably get to that at some future date, but just not right now. Um, and honestly, as it is, it seems to work pretty well, so... Um, I think that about covers it. Let me know if you have any questions or if I kind of fail to mention anything. Um, I think I pretty well covered everything, so hopefully this was kind of interesting. Um, it was fun to do. Probably not super practical because you're probably better off playing any of these games on your computer anyways, but, you know, it's fun to have the original controller and kind of in the original console, so um, that is what it is. Um, I can just turn it off here. Just kills the power. That's totally not a good way to shut down any Linux system, but I don't know. If I corrupt the operating system, I can just reflash it, I guess. So, anyways, thanks and have a great day.